Okay, well, we'll start with making butter. You know, sometime when, uh, when uh, you don't have uh, butter at home, right. you say, when I was a kid, I used to churn it by hand when I was in a farm and out of the cream. So him, let's say there is about two cups of cream here. Right. Two cups of cream will give you eight ounces of butter, half a pound, and it will give you a beautiful cup of buttermilk. And nothing else. Nothing else. That's it. So, you know, you turn this. It will take about four, five minutes before it breaks right. down, but it will break down. After like a minute and a half or so, it foams a little bit like whipped cream. Right. You let it on and it goes on and eventually it breaks down. Right. And then you drain it, you have your buttermilk and you have fresh butter. Well, it's so good. we've all been there. We, we have, we, yeah. When you sort of over whip the cream. Yeah. Well, if you've over whipped your whipped cream because you forgot it and so like right. and the, the phone you rang, we've all been butter. there. Yeah. Just make believe you were making butter. Nobody will know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's a good idea. Add some salt. I mean, this is cool. so trendy in Never restaurants now. All the restaurants, in, uh, at least in New York here, everybody's making their own yeah. house-made butter with different herbs and stuff. It's no big deal. You can go home right after the show and make your own butter, and you don't have to pay for it like you would there. One ingredient. We yeah. like that. One ingredient. Actually, you know, the cream, a quart of cream. I buy a quart of cream about $4. And I pay the, the butter, no, three eighty nine a quart of cream. I pay the butter three seventy nine. It's about the same about price. The same. Plus you have the, you have the buttermilk. The, the benefit buttermilk. of the buttermilk, yeah, exactly, sure. yeah. exactly. Okay, so but what anyway, are you do with some knives here? This is the extension of your finger, you yes. know. I go to place and people say, "Oh, we knew you were coming. We sharpened the knife." And I look, <laughs> I say, "Which side did you sharpen?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're gonna give us so a sharpening lesson? Sharp? Yes. I love this. So you know, when you when you look at a knife, the cutting edge of a knife, it's made of teeth. Anything which cut from a scalpel to a saw is made of teeth. And when I bang the knife on the table like that, the, 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 the teeth get out of whack. So you use this, what dull. we call a steel. Okay. So this one or this one, and you run it on top to realign the teeth. Now, you have to be careful here. People will do that very fast, and they only cover like one inch from the center of the knife. They don't start heel at the heel and finish at the top. Apply pressure. And thirdly, more important, don't move your wrist because people do that. They do that, they, they crush oh, out all the teeth. Telling, you have yeah. to keep. Now, after six months or whatever, there is no more teeth. Then you need a stone. And this is a stone. The stone can be water or oil. If you use it in water, you can go to oil. But if you use it oil, you cannot go back to water. Now, you put it on the table like this so now, that... Now, do you use, you, you use the, the sort of rough side first? Yes. Okay, yes. so if, usually in the stone, there's, like, there's a smooth side and, and then a rough, rough side. Right. Even, even the butcher of three, three side, you know. So and you go and you apply pressure. And here you have to keep, to keep that angle, you know, constant. And you have to spend 15, 20 minutes, you know, with your knife. But you know what happened here? How, how often would you, would you tell people well, to do well, You know when it's needed. You know when it's needed. When you, you can't you, cut you a tomato. You, you keep doing it with this and it doesn't do anything. Okay. But you see what I did here? I did it with that. If I clean that up with paper, you can see how black it is right. here. Yeah, just let them see that. Yeah, yes. that's great. And you see that this is a segment of the stone. If you don't keep the segment loose with water or with oil, the segment gets reincorporated into the stone, and the stone ends up being like a piece of marble. No more abrasiveness. Yeah, if you want it to abrase, you have to keep it clean. You know? and, I, and I think one of the... I think one of the things you'll hear good cooks say is that a dull knife is more dangerous than a sharp knife. Yeah, Absolutely. Because a sharp knife will go where you want it to go, a dull knife may not, right? Because it will slip off And I think with, that people that say that they don't enjoy cooking, it's because some of the equipment that they're using is less yeah. than. Not exactly. a sharp knife, not exactly. a proper cutting board, yes. So now you've done a little bit of the teeth, you know, now you can keep it, it's almost an unconditioned reflex for a butcher, you know, doing it either this way, this is to protect you, or this way, right, but cool. cover it. Now, what is a sharp knife? Depending who, now if I can take a tomato, <laughs> look at that tomato, really, you know, very Super ripe, ripe too. Yeah. And if I can go through the tomato, this way, that tomato, that knife is, is sharp. It's sharp enough. <laughs>